Hey guys, Jiroman here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to modify three more apps, but this time, two of them are going to be Steam apps. I've already done five videos on this, by the way, so I'll link to the playlist in the description. So, let's begin. First of all, I'm going to be modifying Stump Mania. I've made a video on this game, so I'll link this below. Steam gives you the option to start games with Steam, or create shortcut apps that, when you open them, start the game as well. These can also be dragged to your dock, just like normal applications. However which way you launch these games, that's the first step to being able to modify them, because both Steam and the game you're trying to launch opens and shows up in your dock. All running apps show in your dock. The next step is to click and hold or right click on the actual game. Then go to Options and select the Show and Finder option. This reveals the app in a place that's very difficult to otherwise reach. Now, if you watched my tutorial on how to hack apps, you'll be pretty familiar with the rest of this. Begin by right clicking on the app and then selecting the Show Package Contents option. By the way, if right clicking isn't an option for you, hold down the Control key and then click instead. Before you go any further, right click the contents folder and then select get info. This will bring up a window entitled contents info. Interestingly, in the case of Steam apps, you should already have permission to read and write to the contents of this app. But in the case of normal apps, you may need to give this privilege to yourself or everyone. Once you've done that, you can start hacking the app. First, let's look in the resources folder. Firstly, we can see this logo, implying that the game was made using a software named Physx by NVIDIA. In the plugins folder, we can see that there's some sort of Steamworks bundle. In the macOS folder, there's some sort of executable file that starts the app. Seems like many other apps have this as well, but I'm gonna quit, because this is just a demonstration. The frameworks folder contains two frameworks that probably shouldn't be messed with. Last, but certainly not least, let's check out what's in this data folder. At first glance, we can see files that appear to be executables, but they're actually not. They're the levels in the game. But what I did is I swapped the names of level 0 with level 1. Then I started the game. And this is what happened. Uh, what's going on? I thought I just swapped two levels. Well, maybe that's not what happened. So, I'm going to swap level 0 and 1 back, and then I'm going to swap level 1 with level 2. Interestingly, level 0 had a file size of 10 kilobytes compared to level 1 with 151. I'm also going to swap level 3 with level 0. I later concluded that level 0 is the loading screen, level 1 is the selection screen, and then I found out that levels 2 and 3 are Trickster Park and the Island. So this loading screen was probably made to replace this black screen that you just saw, because it's not as cool, right? And the music stops for some reason. Okay, next experiment. Let's swap level 2 with level 3, and level 4 with level 0. Level 4 is the sewers level, and if you look carefully, you'll notice that we're in the room where all the sewage goes. When the music stops, you really can notice the white noise from that. Also, according to the game's level selection, sewers is all the way over here, so these are out of order. Okay, let's move on to the next experiment. What I'm doing is I'm duplicating level 0, dragging level 1 out of the data folder, and then renaming the copy to level 1. Because level 1 is technically level 0, level 0 starts on top of the existing level 0 when level 1 is launched. The game then keeps trying to launch level 1, but the selection screen does not start. The effect? Well, it's pretty audible.
After a minute, you can also notice a visible effect as well. And then I did another recording. Look at this bulging, weird looking loading circle. I listened to that mad cacophony. Luckily, it's pretty easy to revert the game back to normal. Just drag the original level 1 back into the data folder and then select replace. Right, next experiment. Let's swap level 3 with level 4. Now I'm going to start the island level. Pretty much exactly what you'd expect happens because level 4 is the sewers. I also swap two levels, so when I start sewers, the exact same thing happens, just the opposite. So next, I swap level 1 with level 3, and this is what happened. Replacing or swapping level 1 with any other level causes it to load in place of the selection screen. Probably because in the level selection screen, the camera is not just fixed and any one of the cars are allowed to load, including the one that you just used last. This also means that you're stuck with that one until you revert the app, use a different car, and then modify the app again. You're also stuck on the stage you swap the selection for, because when you try to exit the game and go there, this is what happens. Okay, next. I swap level 2 and level 3, and this is what happened. Welcome to Trickster Park. I swap level 5 and level 6, and this is what happened. I started the mini golf level, and welcome to the warehouse. Next, I swapped shared assets files 5 and 6, and this is what happened when I played the game. When I started the mini golf level, the app crashed and quit. But the same thing didn't happen when I started the warehouse level. However, it seems that the shared assets files 5 and 6 I swapped were responsible for the levels 4 and 5 because sewers crashed. Also, it may be a good idea to back up any folders you're modifying through your desktop. Now to move levels 2, 3, and 4 out of the data folder, duplicate level 11 three times over, and rename all three of the copies. Level 11 has the largest file size of 6.3 megabytes, and Atlantis is the most spacious level. And I was right with that guess. Also, apparently starting the Atlantis level as if it's another level disables all of its collision and causes you to fall right through the world. In Speed Freak mode, you use airtime to fill a meter, so this would be a great hack. Also, the same thing happened with the sewers and Trickster Park levels. I did the same thing with level 12 and then started the island level. Welcome to the Ancient Ruins. There's so much more stuff to mess with in this game, so let's just move on for now, and hack this game, however you suppose to pronounce it. In the resources folder, there's an apple icon image, and an osx.readme file. I couldn't really open it, so I just dragged it to text edit, and this is what happened. In the macOS folder, there's an executable file named vvvvvvv or vv or v. I'm not Terry, I don't know how to say this, so let's open that now. When we do this, the game starts, but also this process starts, showing us an ASCII version of one of the crew members. I'm looking at it that way because they're all the same shape in the game. There's also this zip archive, so let's open it. It looks like this zip archive is opened every time you play the game, because there's images, level files, and audio files. It would be pretty self-explanatory what would happen if I swapped the names of the audio files, but it would be interesting to modify the level files in that same way. It would also be interesting to modify the images using paint, but will it work in-game? 
Let's find out. If we drag the original archive out of the macOS folder and right click the data folder, we're given an option to compress it into a new archive. However, it's not the same as the original. You can tell just by the file size. The original was 61.4 megabytes compared to the new one with 61.6. So, will these modifications work? Nope. Unfortunately. However, this game was released in 2010, so if you have an older computer or are using an older operating system, try this and let me know if this works. I'm using a late 2014 Mac Mini running macOS High Sierra. When we drag the original archive back into the macOS folder, the game works again. By the way, here's what's inside Steam Shortcut Apps. So, for the last app that we're going to be modifying, or at least inspecting, the Mac App Store version of VVVVVV. When you open it, this window opens. In the Resources folder, we can see an SWF file. This has the largest file size of any in the game, and some SWF files are used as Flash games that can be played in the browser, which by definition, makes this a Flash game. Another interesting thing I found is that we can minimize the window to an unbelievably small size. So I made an unbelievably small screen recording and tried playing the game on camera for you guys. You can't read any of these words, and the game is extremely pixelated at this point. But this is really interesting. Just out of curiosity, let's try doing the same thing to the Steam version of the game. The game projects at a few different sizes, so changing the window size manually may make the displayed game smaller than the window itself, and at a certain point it doesn't project at all. And minimizing the window to as small as it can ever get causes the main part of the window to collapse. If you try any of these modifications, be sure to back up any folders you're modifying the files in or plan out how you'll revert the game back to normal. Otherwise, you may have to reinstall or repurchase the app if your modifications cause issues with it. This may reset your game progress, or worse, if it's been deleted from the Mac App Store or Steam Store, you cannot get it back. I do not hold a responsibility if these things happen to you, so do be warned. Well, that's it, and that's all. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, please like it, comment below, share, and subscribe. Also, you can check out my channel. I have more videos that you can check out. And as always, thanks for watching.